certainty, Robert makes a vigilant call to cheaters. Robert Grisham, age 27, a youth minister concerned by his girlfriend's change of habits. I remember just um, last winter being in my apartment and uh, we had a fire going and we were just uh, cuddled close together under a blanket and she was just telling me about how much she appreciated me being in her life and uh, how much she just, um, how much she loved me and our future together. One thing I have noticed is it, it, I kind of feel like there's no more love in her voice when she talks to me now. I especially notice that on the phone. Um, she just seems in a rush to get off the phone with me. And I don't know, like she, like she doesn't have time for me anymore. I, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. I need to know what's going on. I, uh, I need, uh, I need another set of eyes. Maybe another two or three sets of eyes. I, I've got to find out. On it. I don't know. I don't know if I can even handle it, but I, I've. I've got to know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Misha Oaks, age 28, a choreographer dancing around the truth. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters detectives waste no time initiating the current investigation and assign field crews to the residence Robert shares with the suspect. After several days of routine activity, Cheaters PIs spot suspect Misha Oaks leaving her home one afternoon. Making several stops along the way, suspect Oaks arrives at an apartment complex, then quickly disappears into one of the units. The situation becomes immediately apparent as Suspect Oaks emerges from the home wrapped in the affectionate embrace of an unknown gentleman. Traveling a few miles to a local eatery, Suspect Oaks dons her companion's jacket as he leads her inside where the two share a meal and some kissing. Satisfied, the couple ventures to a nearby movie house. As they wait for the show to begin, the unknown gentleman educates Suspect Oaks in the finer points of gaming. Hours later, Suspect Oaks and Loving Companion commemorate their time together before departing back to the Companion's residence. Calling it a day, Suspect Oaks' male Companion retrieves his coat before bidding his sweetheart farewell. Investigation Day 7. Hours after Robert has left for the day, Cheaters detectives perk up when Suspect Oaks departs the apartment and heads straight to the same residence she visited two days earlier. Suspect Oaks parks her car, her companion, who has now been identified as Topaz Williams, swaggers out to her SUV. Watching the two exchange friendly hellos from afar, Cheaters investigators tail suspect Oaks and companion Williams for several miles, determining the day's itinerary as the couple stops at a video rental store. Selecting a handful of movies, the cozy couple checks out, then heads over to a grocery store a few blocks away. Strolling the aisles, Companion Williams assists Suspect Oaks in picking out the necessary items for their afternoon alone. With their purchases in hand, Companion Williams displays his familiarity with Suspect Oaks as they enter her vehicle and return to his apartment. Suspect Oaks spends her few stolen hours remaining with Companion Williams behind closed doors. Eventually, Suspect Oaks is forced to leave for a dinner date with Robert. Investigation Day 10. All activities appear back to normal as Suspect Oaks sees Robert off to work in the morning. But Cheater's surveillance teams are quickly reassured of Suspect Oaks' intentions as she departs just 10 minutes later. She is soon back at Companion Williams' front door. He greets her and sweeps her off her feet. Suspect Oaks shows her contempt for Robert in this recorded phone conversation. Oh, 
Concluding the operation, Cheater's detectives prepare a summary for Robert. After the break, the confrontation. With Misha's infidelity well documented, Cheater's requests a meeting with Robert to disclose the outcome of the investigation. Unwavering in his pursuit for the truth, Robert prepares to review surveillance. Rob, thanks for being out here this afternoon. No problem. Thank you. I know that when you initially contacted us, you had some concerns about what was going on in your relationship. Our detectives have compiled some of the information that you've requested of us. Are you ready to take a look at some of that, Rob? Yes, definitely. On this day of the investigation, Rob, we had a detective that was outside Nisha's apartment. She was observed coming out of her apartment, gets into her truck, and drives to a residence. After entering, she is seen leaving shortly thereafter with the gentleman in tow. Oh. They're followed to a restaurant, and you can see him lean in and convert this. Uh, I know that's. That's not, I know that's unexpected. After lunch with this gentleman, they go to a theater. I don't know from this information if they did actually go to a show, but while they're waiting for some time, they're playing some arcades, taking some photos. These are things you do with people that you're involved in a relationship with. After the outing of the day, she drops him off. He leans in, gives her a kiss, and then she goes home. On this day of the investigation, she sends you off to work, goes inside after she feels confident that you've left, comes right back out, gets into her truck, and again goes to the residence of this gentleman. And you could see how she's carrying on. You could see for yourself how they're carrying on. They stop by a park, and you can see an embrace. It's relatively intimate carrying on. Where they go back to the residence of this gentleman, and there's a, another kiss and embrace. Rob, that's not pleasant. I understand. Is this at least an answer to some of the questions that you've been struggling with in your mind? Yeah. I know what's going on now. We do know that as we stand here, Misha is again in the company of this gentleman. I'm gonna call the detective right now and find out what their exact location is. Yeah, we just finished up the client briefing. Can you tell me what you have? They're in a restaurant right around the corner. Okay, we have detectives inside and out. They've been there for a little while. Okay, we're wrapping up right now. We're head over. All right. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. Okay, let's load up. Yeah. Go ahead and start moving. Okay. Okay, we're rolling. We're rolling right now. They left the restaurant? Okay. They're across the street, they're on the move. All right. She's got a tan track suit. You got a visual? Yep, I got you right now. Right there, stop. Stop, there they are. Okay, Robert, come on this side. Come out this side. 
Cabo. Misha, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you, can you stop for a second and give Robert a chance to ask you some questions? It's okay, hey, it's all right. Don't, don't start getting on crumb, dog. Don't start getting on crumb, man. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? That's now, what, what I'm trying to figure doing? out. What are you doing? I want some answers. What, what are all of this? What's this right here, man? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, while, while I'm at work, while I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, providing, you off with this okay. dude right here? Oh, my God. I, I ain't know, I ain't know that. I know okay. she had a boyfriend, but I ain't, I ain't know. Oh, you I, knew. I, I, never knew, I never knew who he was. All I knew was like this. Um, I was having a good time with him. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't, he got kind of like got me scared right now because I don't All know right. if he, he'll have a gun, a weapon, or none of that. You don't know okay. that. This is you can't even get this dude to take you out of his own car? He ain't got a car, do you? He ain't got a car. He's driving me around my car right now. So what do you want? What do you want me to do now? What am I supposed to say now? I don't you know, know. went through all this. Thinking, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I was thinking, you know, get your stuff out by five. I'm not leaving you. You're not. I'm not leaving you. You're not leaving me. Coming up, the conclusion. You know, get your stuff out by five. I'm not leaving you. You're not. I'm not leaving you. You're not leaving me. You were having problems in your relationship. But you're also helping cause problems in someone else's relationship. That's true. Is, is that? That's true. I mean, I don't got no excuse. Like, right? I don't have no excuse whatsoever. I don't have none. Well, even if I could have an excuse that could give me a million dollars, win a million mm -hmm. dollars, I don't have one for that. Though I'm in the wrong. Though you know what I'm All saying. Right. But both well, of us in the wrong. But, well, how long were you going to let it continue, though? I don't know. I mean, I was having a good time with her, but as long as you were sense, having a good time. In a sense, I mean, in a sense. It was at times where I felt that her mind was leaning towards him, you know, the way she reacted and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it maybe it wasn't going to go a long time and stuff. I did see some traces that she really cared about this guy. We're going to be together. I don't know about that. Yes, we are. I don't know about that. Yes, we are. So there's nothing we can do about it but move on, all right? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm about to do. If he, if he, if he pulled, could I say something to him? I think at least you own an apology. This is too much. Let's hear, let's hear what I gotta say. Let's hear what I gotta say. I don't want, I don't want to get into you enough. I don't, I don't care, dude. I, listen, I don't care. I'm just trying to say one thing. I was in the wrong. I was. I admit I was in the wrong. But all along, man, you know, I had a feeling, man, that she still had feelings about you, man. I, and I sensed that for the way certain times she acted around me. And I ain't trying to do nothing, you know what I'm saying, to make you not hurt her, though. But I'm sorry. I was in the wrong. I'm being a man, though. You know what I'm saying? Other people just want to hear it and say it. This would have burned off. So I'll let you know right now, I don't want you to see me. We have any type of grudge, any type of bitter feelings, man. I apologize. We don't accept it. I get enough five years, man. But I did apologize, man. I was man enough for you that man. You know what I'm saying? I apologize. I'm from. I am i think you need to have your stuff out of my apartment by five. I'm not leaving. Is there a reason that you chose to go in this direction, Misha? I mean, I just wanted to make sure that he was what I wanted. So I had to test myself. It doesn't, make, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That doesn't make any sense. It does to me. None. It, it doesn't is. to me or anybody else. That's what that is, though. And, how, and that. how were you, how was that going to give you an answer as far as this relationship is concerned? Because the whole time I was with him, I couldn't stop thinking about him. Are you okay giving her a ride back because this other gentleman took off? All right. What was I doing that was making you unhappy? Or what wasn't I doing that was making you unhappy? Oh, Rob. If she doesn't want to talk, you're not going to make her, especially in this environment. But you can still consider how you want to go forward. No one knows what the future holds. I think in the future, when you find someone who shares your commitment and is the same way that you are, you'll know that.
Undaunted by the turn of events, Robert focuses on both his work and his congregation. Later in the show, Cheaters discusses his present condition. But next, Cheaters welcomes Stacia Colvin. Stacia returns to describe the betrayal she suffered at the hands of her former lover. Stacia Colvin. Stacia discusses how discovering her lover's treachery allowed her to recognize the fragility of her emotions. There's no excuse for him doing what he did to me, especially with my best friend. So there's nothing that he really could have done. It would have helped if he would have been apologetic. It would have helped if he would have told me that it was nothing, but he told me he loved her. <laughs> How did you do that to me? Both of y'all are up. You're up, dog, for real. <laughs> what the f You love her? Is that any way to... You love That's our two kids. I've never had another boyfriend but him. I never was in a serious relationship with anyone except for him. So for him to hurt me like that, it took, a, what, three and a half years to really, really be able to trust another person before. And I really still don't, and I never probably will. You love this girl? You love her? What about you? your woman you've been with for... Oh, so you, you love me because I have your kids. Why and you... why do you love her? Because she sucks your right, what? I'd say a couple months after I got over it and realized what I was going through, realized I was taking care of him and my two kids and realized that he wasn't anything. He couldn't do anything for me, that he couldn't support us. So I'm very relieved now because I know that I'm better off in the situation that I'm in now. And then I could still be taking care of him and my two kids and all that. And it was just, it's better off now, definitely. Robert Grisham expresses his displeasure in the way things turned out with Misha, but confirms that a split is for the best. Robert acknowledges that the relationship had not grown to fit their changing needs, and he can now turn his emotional energy toward the helping of others through his work. Robert hopes Misha pursues positive new goals for herself as well, but he does not exclude any future involvement with the woman he still loves. Misha Oakes agrees with Robert that the two of them should separate. Misha confesses to not wanting to hurt Robert and says she tried very hard to make the relationship work. But she continues, the directions of their lives have drifted too far apart. Misha closes by stating, Robert was always there for me and I don't blame him for anything. Topaz Williams conveys his sympathies to Robert and is sorry for his pain. Though Mr. Williams believes he in no way contributed to the couple's difficulties. Mr. Williams proclaims genuine affection for Misha and his willingness to make her a happy woman. Her access the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Me and Nick's relationship, it used to be amazing, and he just used to be so passionate and just so into me. And when he used to come home from work, he used to come home promptly on time, like he couldn't wait to get to me. And now it's like he come home three hours late and it's steady again later and later. And he really didn't used to do this much at work. I really don't remember the beginning, late days at all. Nick Wesson, age 27, a stockroom manager suspected of increasing his supply of women. After a briefing at headquarters, cheaters professionals circle up around the suspect's place of employment. They spot their mark sometime after sundown. The suspect emerges with an unknown female. Wesson escorts the young lady to his vehicle. The pair drive to a nearby restaurant. Wesson chaperones the unknown woman into the restaurant. Inside, the pair grab a table. They converse as they wait for their food. Getting cozy, the young woman rubs the scruff of the suspect's chin strap beard. Our intimacy level, when it first started off, um, Nick was a guy with a lot of energy, and sometimes it used to be twice a day or three times a day, and it's like I have to influence him now. Every time I try to get close to him, 
Sometimes he'll push me away. Sometimes he'll say he's not in the mood. And it's just hurt because he used to be the person that always influences, you know, and the person that was always so passionate about being intimate with me. But now me having to take the lead and now he's not even wanting to give me no response back, really. He has to be getting it from someone else. A couple of hours later, the suspect and his paramour exit the restaurant in an intimate manner. In gentlemanly fashion, Wesson finesses the unknown woman to his SUV. Then the suspect drives the woman back to his workplace and drops her off, which ends this day of surveillance. I never really had a father, and I always said, hey, when I grow up, I'm going to do the opposite thing that my mom did. You know, I'm going to have me a husband, and my husband's going to be there to take care of my kids. And I just, I don't want to end up like my mom. I don't want to end up lonely. I just, I want somebody to be there for me. I want somebody to take care of me and take care of mine. If he is cheating on me, I mean, there is a whole nother side of me that will come out and I don't want it to come out. So I want to find out if he's cheating on me or not because this is not the man that he says he would promise to be. Cheater's detectives continue to stake out Wesson's workplace. The surveillance team catches the suspect coming out of the building with the same female as before. The woman accompanies Wesson to a drive through fast food restaurant. After getting their food, the suspect pulls into a dark part of the parking lot. Wesson gets out and walks around to the rear of the vehicle. He retrieves a gift and presents a bouquet of flowers to his date, now identified only as Elizabeth. The admirer drives them both back to his workplace. The suspect drops off his paramour and drives home for the evening. Cheater's investigators continue the stakeout around Wesson's workplace. The suspect leaves this evening and drives to a convenience store. Wesson comes out a few minutes later with a bottle wrapped in paper. The suspect leads the cheater's observation squad through town to a hotel. He walks into the front office and returns to his SUV moments later. The suspect moves his vehicle and parks in front of his hotel room. As Wesson goes into his room, cheater's detectives must wait it out. And sure enough, Elizabeth arrives and parks next to her paramour's SUV. The suspect comes out of the room and eagerly hustles his plaything inside. And Cheater's detectives wrap up the case. Coming up, the confrontation. Gathering an abundance of footage proving Wesson's multitude of infidelities, Cheater summons Rashada to review the case facts. With angst in her heart, Rashada steps up to the plate to have her view of the truth. Rashada, I want to say thank you for coming out this evening. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. Um, my question for you is, are you prepared to see that? I think so. OK. Rashada, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of Nick's workplace. A few moments later, he emerges with this unknown female walking together. They then get into Nick's vehicle, and they leave. Our detectives follow them as they arrive at a restaurant. They stop, go inside. That's when we get the shot of them sitting together, enjoying a meal. After finishing up their meal sometime later, they walk out hand in hand. Nick opens the car door for her and escorts her into his vehicle. So this is starting to make a little bit more sense. Yes. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of Nick's workplace. A few moments later, he emerges with that same unknown female. They walk out together, get into Nick's vehicle. A short time later, detectives follow them as they arrive at a fast food joint. They get some food, park the car, begin to eat, 
converse back and forth. That's when we see Nick go to the back of his vehicle and retrieves what I see is a bouquet of flowers. She gets the flowers, smears them in her face in joy, smiling, and they embrace for a very long and romantic kiss. Continuing on with our investigation, we are outside of Nick's workplace. Pulls out a cigarette, begins scanning through his phone, and a few moments later, he receives a phone call. Rashada, tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe. How you doing tonight, baby? I'm good, and you? I, uh, I got some, got some fun news tonight. I gotta stay a little bit late. Gotta run some papers over to, uh, Micah's. Really? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, you met him before over at the Christmas party last year. It really needs to be on JP's desk. Uh, or JP's, he's gonna, he's gonna throw a little fit. Yeah, I know how JP is. Okay, well, would you mind just stopping by and picking up a movie? Because I got some things to do. I still have some chores to do later on tonight. Absolutely, baby. Thanks, babe. Do you remember that night? I don't know. Okay, so after finishing up the phone call with you, Nick proceeds to get into his vehicle. He drives out of his workplace. Mm. And he arrives at a convenience store. We see him walk inside. He comes out holding a bag with some items in it. Our detectives follow Nick as he gets into his vehicle and he arrives at a hotel. A few months later, goes into the hotel, gets a room. Get rooms. Sometime later, he exits. That's when we see him move his vehicle closer to the room that he just got. So Nick gets out of his vehicle, does a quick check around the premises, and a few moments later, that woman from the previous day arrives. She embraces Nick with a hug, and they enter the hotel room. I can't believe this. Rashada, we dove into our investigation a little bit deeper and uncovered some pretty interesting things about this unknown woman. Her name is Elizabeth. She was flown out to Nick's work about three months ago from Lithuania, and she actually is married and has a significant other, a husband, hey. in Lithuania. Really? Yes. So do certain things make a lot more sense? I mean, between his behavior that's changed? It's starting. Starting to? I see why. With that being said, I don't want to waste any more time. I'd like to go confront them. Mm. My I'm question ready. is, you ready? Let's go. Right this way, please. Right this way, Rashada. Watch your step. You ready? I'm ready. All right. There. there he is, right there. Really? Really? So this the kind of things I get? Hey, this the kind of things I get? Bro, hey, bro, hey, really? Chill. Really? What you hey, got man, going hey, on? Man. What you doing, man? Hey, girl. Hey. Really? Yeah, this chill. the treatment I get? Calm down. For real? Calm down. Calm down. For real, no. No, what, what, hey, you, hey, mean baby, 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 what yeah. you mean it ain't what it look like? What you mean it ain't what it look like? What? Are you married? You need to calm down. You, you need to calm down. This is, this is, this yeah. Do you, do you know that this is this man's girlfriend? What? What? I heard that, yes. Coming up, the conclusion. Right this way, shot him. Watch your step. There he is, right there. Really? So this the kind of things I get? Hey, this hey, the kind of things I get? Do you know that this is this man's girlfriend? I heard that, yes. You on a date with whoever you work with? It's not a date. Really? Not a date. Really? You know well, what is it? Hey. Um, just, she's only that he Look, me. there's nothing going on here. Look. And who are you? Where you come from? Is it natural to you? So you gonna tell me who you are? Huh? Huh? Why you Why you gotta touch me? You don't have to put your hands on me or nothing at all. Going to me? Don't put your hands on me at all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just come down, okay? You don't, no. you don't need to be. No. You don't need to no. be. No. Don't, don't, don't touch me. Who are you? Why are you with him? Why? We work. What's going on? You know we working saying. together. Okay. Yeah. This is not bread. Hey, hey, hey. This This is shopping. These are clothes. So? What are you What are you doing? You see, you see? Forget it, you can't even, you can't even. I want to on you and your boyfriend making out, Excuse huh? me. About, huh? Excuse boyfriend. me. So what you gonna do? Look, girl, look, look. What you gonna do? What do you think what is you gonna, gonna happen? Do? This is what look, you call treating me special? Man, that. This is what you call treating me special? 
This way, this like, is special. You, look, how long were this you with your ex husband you? before? This even happened, right? I don't happened, give a right? damn. Why, 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 why are you bringing him up? Why are you bringing him up? This what, is special what, what, to Richie you. You said this was special. I'm sitting here. But you said this was special, though. So do you think when your husband sees this, he's going to think that you're still together with him? You don't think he'll be upset? I don't care at this moment. I just don't care. You don't care? Mm -mm. Bye. You don't want me. Girl, you don't even, Bye. you don't even, you don't want me. You don't me. even know you don't what's going me. on. You don't even know you what's going on. You don't want me. Look, you need to calm down. You don't down. want me. You need to calm go down. Go Look, baby, 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 you love but me, I love you, and baby. I want another I chance you, at this. I do love you. And you want another baby, chance baby, at baby, this. Baby. Forget you. No, because that's all bullshit that you feed me. That's all bullshit. How is this my fault? Go ahead and How back cross country. How is this my fault? Go ahead and back cross country. I worked my and ass off. Oh, bull. yeah. Did you not know that she was married too, did you? So go ahead and go you back cross country. Married. We got together. Okay. Yeah, You're but married. that was then, but this is now. I'm not going to put my husband. She ain't going to leave her husband for you. Yes, she is. Watch. No, she ain't. Watch, watch. I wish she would. Watch. I wish she would. Well, put you under arrest there for assault. That's what you get for bringing all this bull involved. That's enough. Shut up. I work here. We've got some more. Oh, you do? Yeah, All right, let's take care of this one. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, I have an idea, my friend. Have you ever had these before? Absolutely. Get out of there! Hey, hey go! Now we're gonna start arresting people. All right, guys, load up, guys, load up. Load up. Load up. You have any idea on you? Nope. Oh, females coming and searching you, anyways. Huh? The females on their way to search you. Yeah, we didn't sign anything. To get the story a little bit more straight. My client and I came in here to bust her boyfriend, who was cheating on her. They've been together for three years. The third party, we actually had some information on her that she was flown out here from Lithuania to work at his insurance office. They've been together since then, and he's been cheating on her. We come to confront them. They call the police on us. Now my client is detained in handcuffs and sitting in the back of a police car. Our suspect who was cheated on there in the first place is now sitting there, not in handcuffs, and she's in trouble. Uh, that's holding 646 Main Street. It's one thing when you, you know, we get involved, but when the police get involved, it's like there's nothing we can do about it. People get arrested, that's what happens. It sucks. Let's go, load up. An unexpected arrest causes even more pain to the already frustrated Rashada. Cheaters catches up with her to give you an exclusive look at the following day when Rashada is released from jail. We're going to pick up our client. She's over here at the county jail. Our producer just picked her up, so she seems to be in good spirits, and um, we're gonna go get her. They should be walking down this ramp. This is new for us. I guess there's always surprises with the show. Let's go. <clears throat> so at this time, our client has been charged with assault. I don't really know much further than that. We're gonna come pick her up and take her back. I'm just happy to know that she's in good spirits. That's all that matters to me. Oh my gosh, she has the shoes on and everything. Rashada, how are you? I'm so sorry. 
about last night. It's okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything okay though? Oh, I'm good. You good? Do you need anything right now? We'll get you some food, Don't anything you want. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, let's get you out of here. Oh, they gave you some Crocs. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we get you out of here? Um, you know, that what happened last night never happens. And I truly apologize for that. For right now, let's get you out from uh, jail. Let's just get away from here, guys. Get her in the van. For the most part, you shouldn't have anything to worry about as far as um, the, the court case. He's not going to press charges or anything like that. He might have to show up, but that's it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm really, really sorry about this, Rashada. It wasn't my, it wasn't my intention. I wasn't, wasn't thinking this was going to happen at all. Just to let you know, we are taking care of all this. Uh, those charges will be dropped, and all your court fees, any of that stuff, it'll all be taken care of to the fullest extent. Um, but I want to truly apologize, me and the crew, for that happening last night because you, you watch our show, and there's always police involved, but I've never had a client arrested. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience that's watching that could possibly learn from this situation? Well, first of all, no man is worth spending a night in jail over. You know, I had to spend a night in jail just for this whole situation because I found out he was cheating on me and I had to go to jail and do the time. It's just a waste of my time and it's uncalled for and I deserve better and there's better out there. Thank you. According to Roshada Greer, the arrest during the confrontation only served to drive in the final coffin nails on her relationship. Roshada admits that things don't go well for her now. Cheaters producers offer counseling, and for now, Roshada tentatively agrees to go. As for the suspect's deceitful actions, when questioned by Cheaters producers, Nick Wesson confessed he took things too far. The suspect declares he loves the companion, and as soon as Elizabeth divorces her husband, Wesson will ask her to marry him. When contacted by Cheaters producers, the companion, Elizabeth, decried all actions by Cheaters and continues to refuse to answer. ...for his family, Robert takes the difficult first step with the encouraging support of Cheaters. Robert Black, age 26, a welder worried that his girlfriend is misleading him about the truth behind her actions. The first time I met Shannon uh, was at a bar. She was dancing, and uh, I got to dance with her once. And I thought she was pretty, a real pretty girl. And uh, caught my eye the way she was just having a good time with everybody, laughing and stuff. And uh, uh, amazingly enough, I, I ran into her a couple of days later. Uh, at a gas station and uh, she gave me her number. She remembered me from the club and uh, we started going out, talking on the phone and uh, started going out more and more. And uh, it just evolved into something that was a little serious, you know. Whenever uh, me and Shannon are together, it's, uh, it's wonderful. We cuddle up on the couch watching TV. Uh, she's real nice to me. She, she you know, we both, it's like day and night, I and mean, whenever I, uh, she's apart from me, uh, it's like I can't get a t touch with her on the phone. You know, she gives me the cold shoulder on the phone. Sometimes she won't even tell me she loves me. It's like she puts a barrier up whenever we're apart, but whenever we're together, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's totally different. I, I don't understand it at all. It's really weird. At first, the white lies uh, I could deal with, but they kept building on each other and became just totally uh, out of hand. I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I mean, I, like when she first told me that she was pregnant, uh, I questioned that until I went to the doctor. And uh, I'm very happy that she's pregnant and that hopefully this is something that could be the catalyst to help her change and, and, and help herself heal or make a better better life for both of us and our family. I really want, I want to propose to her and I would like to marry this girl. Well, after we found out she was pregnant, uh, I thought she wanted to spend more time with me, but uh, it hasn't been that way. It's like I try to get in touch with her 
And I call her at home and she doesn't answer. And uh, I finally get in touch with her and she tells me that she was at home. And Shannon's the type of girl that always had a man in her, in her life, you know, so if I'm not there, then uh, I'm betting that uh, somebody else is there and I, I wanna know. If she comes clean with me and tells me everything and for the sake of the family, of our family, I would, I'd work on it really hard. It'd be hard for me to do, but I would really, I'd try to forgive her because family's supposed to forgive each other. And uh, I would really want it to, the family to survive this, but I hope she's not cheating on me. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Shannon Boyle, age 24, a customer service rep bringing in another man for emotional support. Investigation day three. Cheaters operatives situate outside the suspect's workplace and maintain their position for many hours. Early in the afternoon, Cheaters PIs zoom in on suspect Shannon Boyle exiting her place of employment. Impatiently pacing back and forth, suspect Boyle appears to be waiting for someone. Cheaters agents prepare for mobile surveillance after an unknown gentleman abruptly pulls up. Suspect Boyle hops into the sports car and immediately plants a big kiss on the unidentified man. Cheaters investigators, aware of suspect Boyle's pregnancy and of her scheduled OBGYN appointment, pursue the couple to a local hospital. Accompanied by the unknown man, suspect Boyle enters the doctor's office and remains there for some time. Eventually, suspect Boyle and companion head back through the parking lot to his car. Attempting to follow the two, Cheaters PIs lose sight of the vehicle as it speeds dangerously off with Robert's unborn child inside. Investigation Day 5. Situated outside the residence suspect Boyle shares with her sister, Cheaters PIs wait for any questionable activity. They observe suspect Boyle on her balcony just minutes before the arrival of a familiar looking vehicle. Suspect Boyle's companion, whose identity is withheld, makes his appearance and dashes to suspect Boyle. Stopping to pick some flowers for his girl, the companion presents his gift to the enamored suspect. Suspect Boyle graciously hugs her companion and the couple departs. Cheetah's detectives track the duo to a nearby tavern. With a clear vantage point from the parking lot, Cheetah's agents watch suspect Boyle and companion ordering several rounds of drinks. Suspect Boyle motions for her boyfriend to hush up as she answers a call from Robert. She promptly disposes of him and makes a toast with her preferred lover. With a party winding down, the companion leads Suspect Boyle back to his car. Cheaters investigators follow the couple back to Suspect Boyle's apartment where kisses are shared before the companion reluctantly departs. Investigation Day 9. Cheaters operatives stationed at Suspect Boyle's residence receive notice of her companion's probable arrival. And as if on cue, Suspect Boyle emerges from her home just moments before her companion enters the scene to pick up his date for the evening. Suspect Boyle displays little consideration for Robert's feelings in this recorded phone call. Hey, baby. I was wondering if you want me to take off work tomorrow to go to the doctor's. Well, I just need to do that. Well, I feel like I should, I should be there. I already talked to my boss and stuff. I mean, he said it was cool. Oh, don't, don't worry about it. I already have a friend of mine. She's taking me. She took off. You sure you don't want me to go along? I can come along. Don't worry about it. It'll be next time. Uh, that ain't right. I, I think I should be able to go. Well, I already told her. Are, are you, you don't want me to be there? Is that what I said? No. Good stay at work, I guess. Yeah, I'll see you later. Bye, right, baby. Cheaters crews prepare all the compiled data for a meeting with Robert. Coming up, the confrontation. With comprehensive evidence validating Robert's fears, Cheater speaks with him to reveal Shannon's wayward conduct. Ready to move forward, Robert prepares himself for the unexpected results. Bobby, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, I know, I know you're kind of jittery and a little bit on edge. We're here tonight because our detectives do have some information that they wanted you to see. 
Are you ready I'm to ready take to a look know. at it, Bob? I want to know. Okay. As the investigation started, the detective observed your girlfriend outside of where she works. Mm -hmm. And she's picked up from another gentleman, and they share a kiss together. Miss. They were followed to a hospital, and you see them walking in holding hands. They were in there for some time. Yeah, he's going to the doctor instead of me. And that's your, your girlfriend and your child. And he was identified as, is that name? Oh, hell yeah. That's one of her exes. So this is someone that she's been with, she's dated before, that you know about? Yeah, she's mentioned his name before. On this day, they drive to a local motel. They head into the motel, and they're in there for quite some time. Now, does this answer the questions that you came to us for? Yeah. We do know where she is, Bobby. Yeah, she's let's go. She's right around the corner at a restaurant with this gentleman. I like to tell him how much uh, I think about the subject myself. Bobby, look at me. I know you're upset. This is the mother of your child, but we're not gonna let it get out of hand, okay? No, I'm not gonna stoop to her level. Okay, good, that's what we wanna hear. It's Joey, what do you got? Okay. We have a, she's wearing a black shirt, he's wearing a white shirt. We're coming in right now. You see us? You stay next to me. Okay. I see you, all right, I got you. Stop right here, stop. What the hell you drinking for, man? You're What the hell are you drinking for? You drinking? No, that's not necessary. What about the baby, man? Are you What about the baby? What are you following me for? It's not your baby. It's not your baby. It's not. Your baby. It's not. Coming up, the conclusion. What are you drinking for, man? What the hell are you drinking for? You drinking? What about the baby, man? What about the baby? What are you following me for? It's not your baby. It's not your baby. It's not. I've been with for a while. It's not your baby. Well, how I was pregnant when I got with you. Well, you were pregnant when you got with him? Yes. So you've been pregnant I for... I didn't know. It was me and him. When you started dating together. him? We've been trying to get back together. We've been trying to get back What's together. What's trying to get back together? Okay, this is enough. Well, you're together or not it together? Than anyone, man. Why, why are you starting a relationship with him okay. if you're, you're the together one with him? No, all you, we just want to find out what some, some of the truth is for our client. Funny, man. You guys are funny. Y'all think it's funny. This is, here, here's, it's funny. You can just tell, what's your side of the story? The side of my story is we haven't been together for a while. Me and Bobby is big okay. You and this gentleman haven't been together for a while. They have been together. Off and on. Oh, baby, mom. Off. Okay, so when was the off? In the off is when you got together with, with Bobby? Yeah. But when you got on, you just didn't let Bobby know that you were back well, with, yeah, we with him. we haven't been around. We haven't even spoke to each other. It's been, it's been months. I mean, we'd see each other, but he works so much. I mean, I, I don't have time to talk to him. I don't live with him. Well, you know why he's working? Because he's trying, he thinks this he is his child. He didn't even take me to the doctor's appointment. I had him take me to the doctor's appointment. He's it's been trying, he's no, been he trying, hasn't. he's no, been he trying hasn't. to go to the doctor. Are you you drink, You've been excluding. Hey, guys. Hey. Guys. Hey. Guys. Hey. Hey. guys. Hey! Whoa, Bobby, Bobby. Come on. Come on. Hey. 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 Come on. Hey. Bobby, that's not necessary. Hey. Bobby. Come on. Squash you like that? It's not worth it, baby. It's not worth it. You know that. What, man? No oh, way. Go, come on. Whatever, man. Come on. 
Hey, this isn't it. Hey, you know what? What you want? You know Whoa. I am pregnant. I'm not in a big. Oh. Yeah, look, all we want. Is a, all we want to do. Find out what's going on. Hey, this chance to. No, I'll take a pass on that, brother. You've got a great start. Family values going on here. Good start for family values. All right, let's get out of here. I want to think of denial, but maybe she's drunk. I don't, I don't know if her being drunk, though, is an excuse for how she was disrespecting you. She was lying to your face. Yeah, of course she was. What is this going to do to you? tomorrow when you wake up there's a possibility it could be mine so i have to stand up like a man and put my boots on in the morning and go to work and find out if that's my kid or not take it to court and get dna test on it. that's what i'm gonna do so you're willing to fight for that yeah, child right I am. okay she ain't worthy what if the child were affected because of her drinking. God help her. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to have that on my shoulders or on my plate when I went to see the Lord. That's for that I'm sure. After the confrontation, Robert finds solace in his family and friends. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on his status. But next, Cheaters welcomes Anita Cibriano. She comes forward to remove the stigma associated with her role in the Castillo case. Anita describes her moment of panic when descended on by the Cheaters crew. Anita Cibriano, age 25. Anita stops by to offer her recollection of the events surrounding the Veronica Castillo case. Actually, we just, I just moved into the area, so I wanted to check out the new spots right there, and that just happens, so happens to be very convenient by my house. I wasn't know I was going to be surprised with all that. Oh Is that the way we're playing now? I'm usually the one who's the dominant to find out what's going on or anything. This time I didn't because I didn't care <laughs> too much. So no, I mean, this is the first time that a female has actually came and done something like this. What? You're a liar. Oh, come on, You're Roger. a liar. That's not necessary. Wait, 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 you wait, 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 You told me you were at work, right? Wait, 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 you know what? Oh my God. Oh my God. Get away from me. You lied to me. You told me you were at work. I was, I was, I was my baby. No, that's not working. That's what you call working? Uh -huh. Who else do you work with like that? That's how I work. That's it. We know that he's been seeing you more recently. Yes. He okay, has. so you got back together? Yes. Okay. Let me tell you. My children are going through a difficult situation right now because he's not there as often as he should be anymore. And with him leaving so abruptly that night, I'm doing this a lot by myself. I'm getting envelope money. So <laughs> he's. He's came around twice in the past three weeks, so it's kind of hard for my children to understand why it's going the other way now. I mean, he's trying to come and see us, but I'm not letting him. <laughs> he will eventually be back home. Robert Black is overcome with anguish as he attempts to untangle the web of confusion caused by Ms. Boyle. 
Robert can't put into words the difficulty in understanding Ms. Boyle's motive for lying to him about being the father of her child. Though relieved by the outcome with Ms. Boyle, Robert will waste no effort in verifying the child's true parentage. Shannon Boyle claims she doesn't owe Robert anything except a minor apology for withholding the true identity of the child's father. Unfazed by Robert's tribulation, Ms. Boyle blames her pregnancy for her odd behavior. She concludes that Robert never really held a special place in her heart and admits she will not miss him. As far as Ms. Boyle's companion, he's upset with her for not breaking it off with Robert. Ms. Boyle's companion is now questioning the validity of Ms. Boyle's claim that the baby is his and insists on getting the matter cleared up. A despondent Mike calls cheaters to alleviate his suspicions. Michael Fought, age 27, a grocery stocker worried about his girlfriend's tendency to stray. Well, love to me is is pretty much being able to open each other's hearts to each other. And when I met, I thought it was actually, you know, I could feel that that's somebody I could trust. And somebody that I figured would never let me down or anything. Me and have been together um, a little over two years now, I guess. Uh, we met when we were at a party at one of my friend's houses. And we just really hit it off since then. I feel like it's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, we used to just sit around and watch the clouds and just make little shapes out of every cloud. And to me, just the creation of that picture it just is unmatchable. The reason why I came to you guys, I mean, everything's been really great up until we moved into our new apartment, and then ever since then, she's just been real distant, not wanting to do anything, hang out, not wanting to return my phone calls, nothing. Well, there's a lot of times that, that she just gets stressed out and she'll leave, and sh she'll be gone for a day or two, and then come back and say that she was um, staying with her mother. But sometimes I've even called her mom and she wasn't there. So, I, I don't know. I just wish I could find out if she would tell me the truth. She's come up with a lot of new things around the house recently, like sunglasses and uh, she got a, a new dog the other day. I mean, it was, it's a beautiful dog. I mean, it's probably worth a whole lot of money. It's a purebred, it looks like. But I just don't know where she came up with the money for it because I know I didn't buy it for her. It's just the most important thing in the world to me to be with her right now and make things the way they were. I would give anything for it. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 24. An unemployed live-in taking advantage of her boyfriend's trusting nature. Investigation day four. Dispatchers at Cheaters Command Center instruct field agents to close in on the residence that Mike shares with the suspect. After moving into position, Cheaters PIs observe Mike departing for his evening shift at the grocery store. Sensing that the coast is clear, the skulking figure of an unknown gentleman swiftly approaches the residence. Cheaters investigators wait patiently for some time until the unknown man reappears arm in arm with the suspect. The couple piles into his car and the two immediately depart the complex. A few miles up the road, the suspect and company stop at a deli to grab a bite to eat. Once inside, the suspect and her companion enjoy a hearty meal before moving on to their next destination. Apparently in a hurry, the unknown companion speeds off to a nearby shopping mall. The suspect's unidentified companion escorts her through several stores before purchasing a gift for his date. Cheaters agents watch as the couple exits the mall after the suspect gets everything she wants. Back at the suspect's apartment, the two lovebirds share a beer out on the balcony. 
until Mike arrives home unexpectedly. Leaping over the guardrail, the young man scampers out of sight just seconds before Mike steps outside. Investigation Day 7. Cheater's dispatchers inform field agents that the suspect's companion is about to pay her a visit. Hopping out of his car with an adorable little puppy, the young man, who is now identified as Rick Werner, strolls to the suspect's front door. Companion Werner rings the doorbell and receives the reaction he was hoping for from the suspect. Tickled pink, the suspect grabs the pup and the couple takes him for a walk. After a short while, an unknown man joins the couple. Displeased with the gentleman for some reason, Companion Werner tells him to get lost. The unidentified man leaves the scene, giving the suspect ample time to personally thank Companion Werner for his bravery. Having enough of the great outdoors, the duo heads inside with their new puppy. They're not seen for some time. Back in action, Cheater's PIs spot Companion Werner as he kisses the suspect before departing. Investigation Day 12. After receiving word of movement from Companion Werner, Cheater's investigators return to the residence shared by Mike and the suspect. The suspect stands outside conversing with the same strange man who received a scolding from Companion Werner just days earlier. Cheater's detectives capture the situation as the unknown fellow and the suspect make out just minutes before Companion Werner's arrival. The suspect exhibits nothing short of complete incorrigibility in this recorded phone call. Hey, man. What's up? Well, you know, I haven't seen you in a long time, but I'm working two jobs, and I was talking up for here at Albertsons and doing a birthday thing. How is that providing for us? A drink. Hey, who's that over there? The maintenance guy. He had to fix the air conditioning. Is the air conditioning broke? Yeah, you didn't notice? So, I know it's getting cold out, so I've been using it a lot lately, but I was cold, I was hot today. Cheaters PIs collect the evidence and report back to headquarters for a meeting with Mike. Coming up, the confrontation. With the investigation now complete, Cheaters prepares the evidence for Mike. Having received the call, Mike must take the next step toward an uncertain future. Mike, thanks for being here. The reason that we are here is that our detectives do have some information that they've compiled. Are you ready to take a look at that? Yes. Okay. As we start the investigation, the detective was right outside your apartment. We see a gentleman crossing the parking lot, goes to your apartment, and he comes out with relatively arm in arm. They get in the car, drive to a restaurant. They sit down, have a bite to eat. From that restaurant, Mike, they drive to a mall. She tries on some glasses, and, and we see this gentleman paying for some of those items. Remember. On this day, the same gentleman that had come out when she was walking the dog with the first gentleman comes to the apartment. You see them embrace in the hallway. After they leave one another, the guy that's the giver of gifts shows up in his car and they're followed to a jewelry store. They do some type of shopping. They're followed back to your apartment. We know that she's again together with this gentleman. What would you like to do? I need to talk to her. I need to settle this. Okay. Come with me and let's get ready to roll. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, they went out back to this the courtyard where we saw them with the dog. Okay, we're moving right now. Okay, we'll be there in a couple minutes. All right. You deserve explanations. All right? Yes.
Where's the courtyard? Right up here. Okay. All right, come on. Where are they? Where are they? You see them? No, here they are, right here. Come on, mate. Come on. Yeah. Do you have any explanation for this? Uh, he's home early. What's this? That is, uh, you, you came home early. Did I find this? What are you about? Just kind of going along for the ride? I was going along with whatever they both threw my way, and I decide when the decision became necessary, which is obviously now, and I still don't know. And you still don't know? Well, you know, I, I think decisions are being made for you. Are you going to be with this guy, or are you going to be with me? Take him. That's what you deserve. You ain't having me back. Coming up, the conclusion. Take him, that's what you deserve. You ain't having me back. From the looks of it, you don't even deserve to be in a relationship. I don't think you're mature enough to, because obviously you can't handle it. You shouldn't even keep the dog that I gave you. But you can make your own decision, because I'm out of here. What's the other way around? I don't know. I'm sorry. I know that doesn't help. Are you being sincere about that, or is it just because you're, you're seeing your gravy train kind of head on out? Well, I did was wrong, yes, but you know. Well, thank you for at, I least, mean, at, at least said that from the beginning. Taking that responsibility. But it's still life hurts. Man. out of a hole you know what you can do don't lose that focus right you've accomplished that you did that for yourself you know that you can all the answers I needed With the strain of the confrontation now behind him, an emotionally exhausted Mike looks forward to an undoubtedly brighter tomorrow. At the end of the show, Cheaters informs you of his continued progress. But first, Cheaters presents Tanya Sharon. Tanya discusses the embarrassment she endured when confronted by her boyfriend, Chris. Tanya Sharon, age 30, 
Tanya describes the night she was caught engaging in a sexual affair with her young apprentice. Well, when the vans pulled up, when we were on the side of the road fixing the flat or whatever, I thought maybe it was people coming to help us. And I saw the guy, uh, Joey Graco from the show. I realized it was the show Cheaters. And, you know, then I saw Chris and I kind of knew exactly what was going on by then. What's up, T? Tanya, what the f? What's up, What's this? bro? What's up, dog? What's up, dog? What's up, dog? What's up, dog? Come on, man. Break that up, break that up. I really feel bad for Justin because, you know, he had he was put in a situation to where, like I said, Chris should have even gone to the extreme of calling a show and having me investigate it like that. You know, it's really something that could have been worked out between both of us. Come on. What's up, Tanya? Hey, hey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get off. Baby, get in the car. Hanging out with your girls from the salon and some hair appointment and all that? There you go. Have a conversation. What you lie for? Why'd you have to put me on TV? What you mean why I had to put you on TV? Because you wouldn't talk to me. This is the only reason I can get you to act right. Well, the thing with Justin was, you know, he really was a little boy toy for me. Um, I really, like I said, I hate that he had to go through that situation or whatever, that episode of, you know, being investigated and getting busted with, well, getting drug into something with me um, because of what I was doing. Um, you know, he was just a little fling, you know, just hanging out, you know, having fun. My mom gonna see this? My mom's gonna see What you too. think, my mom? I'm gonna have to go back to work and see, and people gonna see all this? You got me out here acting a fool over this uh, glass joke right here? Oh, they crying they ain't gonna work, man. I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't with all these old sob stories. Drama queen anyway. You ain't gonna talk to me? You ain't gonna talk to me? You ain't gonna talk to me? Well, you just come get all your up out of my house. I will come in You come get your out of my house. No, really nobody's business on what was going on between me, Chris, and, you know, my friend. So I'm very particular about my privacy, you know, and having to be put out on TV and television like that is kind of, you know, it was really crazy. And, you know, that's one thing I stress, you know, People in relationships should talk it out. You know, it's, it's, it should be more of a privacy type of thing. Mike Fodd admits he's having a very difficult time putting the incident behind him. Although he's not heard from the suspect since throwing her out, Mike still is tempted to contact her and rekindle their relationship. Mike says his family and friends have kept him strong and remind him of the pain the suspect has inflicted. Mike is now considering a move to another state in an attempt to make a fresh start. The suspect confirms that she now lives with another man after getting the boot from Mike. The suspect admits she needs a man who can properly take care of her. She says that Mike simply does not make enough money to suit her needs, leaving her with the sole option of seeking more affluent gentlemen. Rick Werner says that he's through with the suspect after learning of her involvement with a variety of other men. Although, Mr. Werner says that he was all right with the suspect's involvement with the one guy whom he considers to be a joke. Mr. Werner hung up on Cheaters producers after being questioned. Nerves. Nikki contacts Cheaters to tackle the crisis. Nikki Sims, age 29. A bartender worried that her boyfriend is losing interest in maintaining their relationship. My definition of love is, I mean, it's cosmic, you know, it's we being someone's best friend and, you know, being able to talk to them about anything and, you know, being, being there for somebody and giving the same love that they give you. You know, he comes home from looking for a job and he's too tired to talk to me and if I, you know, even if I ask him how his day went, he just gets irritated by me. We don't really have a physical relationship anymore, you know. He doesn't rub my feet anymore. It's like, it makes me feel really lonely, you know? It's totally different. If he's cheating on me, I, <laughs> I'll be devastated, you know? I'll be so, so hurt, but so angry. I, don't, I just, 
Just even thinking about it makes me want to strangle him. <laughs> like, I can't believe he would do that to us. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity withheld, age 29. A multimedia developer with no regard for the consequences of lying to a loved one. Investigation day four. For several days, Cheater's operatives remain close to the suspect as he conducts various activities of a routine nature. On this particular day, Cheater's detectives perk up as the suspect, whose identity is withheld, leads Cheater's PIs to the parking lot of an unfamiliar residence. After exiting his vehicle, the suspect approaches the front door and rings the bell. A moment passes before the door opens and an unknown woman greets the suspect with a kiss. Cheater's agents take note of the warm reception, confident that Nikki would disapprove. They enter the suspect's car and travel several miles to a park located in the center of the bustling city. The suspect and his lady friend advance to a fountain and share a kiss moments after their arrival. Cheater's inspectors cautiously track the duo to a nearby restaurant where the suspect and his companion enjoy a pleasant lunch together. The suspect foots the bill and the two depart for their next destination. Apparently in a generous mood, the suspect opts to purchase a gift for his new girlfriend. Offering her stamp of approval, the companion places her arm around the suspect before they begin their journey back to his vehicle. Gallant to the end, the suspect opens the car door for his companion. Back at the companion's residence, the suspect insists on a few more kisses before allowing her departure from the vehicle. Investigation Day 8. Cheaters field agents are dispatched to intercept the suspect after he departs his residence. Following a lengthy pursuit, the suspect makes a stop at a local drugstore. He dashes inside and returns a short time later. In a hurry, the suspect cuts through traffic and then stops to pick up his companion from the previous day. She is now positively identified as one Janet Rogers. Companion Rogers enters the suspect's vehicle and the two travel several miles. Ready for a night out on the town, the suspect parks his car and escorts Companion Rogers to a nearby watering hole. With their privacy prioritized, the suspect and Companion Rogers locate a table apart from the other patrons. Cheater's agents remain at a safe distance to avoid detection by the amorous duo. Stopping at a fruit stand, the suspect gives Companion Rogers a peck on the lips before the two continue on their way. After a short drive to Companion Rogers' place, the lovebirds disappear behind her front door and are not seen for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 11. Cheaters' operatives continue their observation outside the suspect's residence and quickly move into action as he departs the location on foot. The suspect slips around a dark corner and enters a discreet pool hall where Ms. Companion patiently awaits his arrival. Cheater's agents stay on the couple's trail as they walk to a nearby restaurant. The suspect's propensity for dishonesty is evidenced in this recorded telephone call with poor Nikki Sims. Cheaters field agents regroup back at the headquarters to assemble their final report for Nikki. Coming up, the confrontation. Compiling ample confirmation of the suspect's indiscretion, Cheaters visits with Nikki to inform her of the situation. Aware of the possible repercussions, Nikki remains willful in her quest for truth. Nikki, thanks for meeting us out here tonight. Since the time you've contacted the show, have there been any changes or anything that's caused you greater concern or piqued your interest or even lessened your, your well, his initial? Distance, his distance has gotten worse. And I also found these pictures in his pants pocket. 
Did you confront him with this? Um, yeah, he told me that that was his friend. It was a friend he's had for a long time. And an old college friend, and I just, you know, it doesn't look like friends, you know? Well, the reason that we do have you here this evening, our detectives do have some information they thought it'd be important for you to see. Some of this may provide the answers that you're looking for. Okay. Are you ready to take a look at that? Yeah, I guess. Nikki, as the investigation started, was followed on this particular day into the city. He parks at a location, and as soon as he gets out of the car, she meets him at the door, they greet each other with a kiss. I guess I have my answer. There followed to a park. Now, during the day, is this? This is when he's supposed to be out looking for a job that he comes home every day unsuccessful at. So now I know what he's been doing at this time. They take a stroll through the park. And again, as they get to a fountain, you can see through the water, there's another embrace and they share a kiss. They go to a restaurant from there and they're just taking their time. I don't think this is an interview. No, it's not. After spending the day together, they return to her residence. And there's a moment where they lean over and you can see that there's a kiss. On this day, the detective followed to a pool hall. He meets this young lady inside the pool hall. After spending some time relaxing at the pool hall, they exit and again are followed, this time to another restaurant where he takes her out. And I'm sorry that you have to see this because this is what you suspected. They go to a liquor store and make a purchase. And you can see, as he drops her off, they stop for an embrace. I know this is what you asked us to find out for you. But at the same time, I know this has to be upsetting as well. Yeah, it's extremely upsetting. I'm sick to my stomach. <clears throat> Where did he tell you who's going to be this evening? He told me it was at his friend Steve's house, watching the game, drinking beer. We know that he's not at Steve's place. We know he's with this woman again this evening. I'm gonna call the detective right now and find out where they are. We just finished the briefing. What do you have? They're at a bar. We have detectives inside and outside. We're on our way. Okay. 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 All right, come on. Yeah. They left the bar. They're almost to the car. Let's get going. We got to hurry up. Keep it moving. All right, you see us? Okay, the silver car, second one on the right. All right, right here. There they are, right there. All right. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. So who was that? What is this? What are you, are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You've been lying to me for two months now. You know, no, 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 no. Don't, don't touch man, me. Look, don't look, touch me. You seriously? Can, you don't have the right to touch me anymore. Seriously? It's all right. Just talk to me. Don't worry. No one's... This is stressing me out. Okay. Well, I understand where it'd be stressful, but... Yeah, I want to talk to you. Don't touch me. Seriously? Don't touch me. You can't. You don't have the right to touch me. Come here and talk to me. What is with this camera? Were you unhappy in your relationship with... Were you unhappy? At least... Obviously, you, yeah. Obviously, okay. Yeah. Was there a reason why you couldn't tell her? Coming up, the conclusion. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Okay. Was there a reason why you couldn't tell her? Before you started seeing someone else, was there a reason why? Look, no one's... Because I'm tired of being embarrassed. So now, okay. now, now no, you're embarrassed. Your, this, is your, this is your friend, right? You're, your, your uh, childhood friend, your old college buddy, right? You know well, I want to talk to you know her. What? Who is she? Yeah, don't worry about her. What's her? You know she what? got a name? This is between... Oh. Do it. It ain't her, I'm sorry. Yeah, it ain't that's her, her name. You know? That's her name. How about that? It ain't her. You know what I mean? No, what? you don't this know me, saying. so you don't need to be saying... I don't me. know you, huh? Chill. You don't know me either. Obviously, you know... Get him. You know he's living with... You know this is my boyfriend? He lives with me? You know that? Don't touch me, dude. Get away from the camera. What the... 
out of my face. No, no. What are you gonna leave with her? No, no. You guys can't go. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you? No. This whole it's crazy. It is crazy. You lied to me for two months. How about that? Let's get out of here. Are you guys gonna go get married now? Oh, yeah, that's so that great. That's great. This is, this is insane. Where are you guys gonna? No, no, where are they going? But at least, can you talk with Nikki? I changed the locks in the door. You can't get in. You can't you have any. You done. told you you were embarrassed. Can you at least. T Why were you embarrassed? Why were you embarrassed? This is insane. Unbelievable. Totally you won't even insane. talk to me. The stupidest I've, I've you ever dealt with in my girl. life, yo. It's fucking insane. This is no, no, no. No, no, no. Seriously? Oh, oh you know what? Talk to me, because you won't even huh. pull me aside and talk to me, you know, in person, in front of these cameras. Get the you f***ing out of You lie to me. Just talk to me for real, away from this stupidness. This is... I can't. This I'm one crazy. Can't. You know what? Honestly, I'm... You know, I am doing this whole... You know what? This is even more insane. So, you what know else what? Are they supposed to... What else are they supposed to do? You lie to me every day, dude. Every day. This is insane. I can't even get a straight it's answer out of it. Is it funny to tell the girl it's crazy. It's that's crazy. been supporting I'm, you, I'm that loves you? Here. Get out of my Look, just, can you hang on for a second? <laughs> See you later. Like, you guys gonna go and get married now? Where is the... This woman. I will this run woman. you all okay. over. Listen up. Get out of Listen my way. up. Mario Andretti, you're not going to get out. Look at you, Mario Andretti. I'll knock you out. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You, you, you can't even. Why don't you come, you come you in the car with me and talk with me? Because this is. I'm not going to go in the car with, with you. Are you kidding me? Are you what? kidding me? Hey, hey, hey yo, wait to catch yeah. you off camera, girl. Yeah. Wait till, I know where I know who you are. I know where you live. I saw your house. Just like I said. Just like I said. I'm going to wait. Wait till I see you again when it's not on camera. Forget it. You're done. Hey, you're done. Yeah. You're done. Where are you going, huh? Look, you know. Liar. You lying? Yeah, no, guys. Watch out. I know this is difficult. No, you're going to get through this. But at least after tonight, you'll be able to make the decisions for your life that are gonna have your best interest in mind. Yeah. Okay. I just don't, I don't even know what to do anymore. I'm like flabbergasted. I just, I feel like a joke. I feel like you played me for so long. After the confrontation, Nikki extinguishes all temptation to allow her boyfriend back into her life. At the end of the show, Cheaters unveils her platform for the days to come. But now Cheaters introduces the third party from the Michael Jurgen case. Wishing to maintain his anonymity, the interloper prepares to shed light on his involvement in the case. Identity withheld, age 21. Having recently experienced a full assault from a jealous boyfriend, this Cheaters guest discusses his unforgettable encounter. As I saw the guys come out of the van, I knew exactly what was going on. I had seen the show before, and I was like, oh, this, you know. And then after that, it just kind of got out of hand on my part. Christina? Christina? Hey. No. Where'd she go? Please. What is going please. on? What is going on? Oh my God. We're, Get these cameras out of my face. I'm serious. What I'm is not this? joking. Wait, Michael, what the hell? Please, I'm sorry. I, see, I saw that he showed me on the. Hey, dude. Come on. Yeah. Dude, stop it. I wasn't chasing his girlfriend. The story she told me sounded true. I mean, she was never busy. She could always hang out whenever I wanted her to. So I really saw any signs that she was lying. So I just went ahead, as most people do, and it turns out that she, just like the mini, is a liar, too. Who is that? Look, it's a, it's a friend from school. Please. Yeah, okay, yeah, a friend, a real. Yeah, I saw can the. I saw the. Away from these. Saw the footage. I saw what? What no. footage? They showed me. They've been following you. They showed me what you've been doing. How could you do this? Why couldn't you just come to me and ask me about this? I don't know if you're trying to put this on me. Damn, my whole family's gonna see this. You're gonna do. 
ask me on television? Meet you. you. Come up to me. You. To just ask me about Whoa, this. Oh, you. <laughs> to lose the lose control like I did, just I was in a, I was in a bad situation. I was trying to get out of there, and everywhere I went, the same guy kept stepping on my toes. I had sandals on, and I kept trying to push him out of my way. And just all of a sudden, something came over me, kind of like blacked out for a second. The next thing I know, the the guys are pulling me off, and there's a guy on the hood of the car. Get out of my face. Please, baby, please. Just, you guys, get out of here. Please. Get out of my face, dude. Don't this on me. Don't try to put this on me. Why do you have to get all these cameras in my face? No, actually, I'm not dating anyone right now. I'm still single. I decided to be kind of more relaxed and just let them come to me as far as dating goes. But if anybody's interested, you can find me on NoCheatersDate.com and we'll see what happens. For more information on these and other cases, log on to Cheaters.com. Nikki Sims remains very angry with the suspect and has since kicked him out of the apartment they once shared. Feeling betrayed, Nikki affirms her decision to end her relationship with the suspect for good and to start taking advantage of the many propositions she receives working as a bartender. Nikki remains confident that she will eventually find a man who understands the meaning of loyalty. The suspect claims he made a mistake and swears that he will be straightforward with Nikki from now on if given a second chance. Lacking steady employment and without a place to call home, the suspect requests assistance from Ms. Rogers with the hopes that she will allow him to stay with her until Nikki experiences a change of heart. Janet Rogers is quite skeptical about letting the suspect move in after seeing how he uses women. As a precautionary measure, Ms. Rogers called Nikki to discuss the suspect's true nature. Offering an apology for her involvement, Ms. Rogers says she informed Nikki that she will not remain involved with the suspect. And according to Nikki... Lucian, Constance calls on cheaters, veteran detectives, to solve the case. Constance Washington, age 27. A homemaker worried that her boyfriend is keeping his eyes open for another woman. I have been knowing Johnny for about five years. And I just love Johnny because Johnny is sweet. And I figure that we love each other. How I love is together with Johnny is we do everything together. In the beginning of this relationship, we, had, we went everywhere together. We did everything together. We had lots in common. I loved him because he was a little short. And he was kind of stocky. And he, he has a gold here in his teeth. And that really was attractive to me. And... Uh, from there, I just love the way he walks. That's what turned me on about Johnny. In order for me to have his kids, like that's our problem too, is he has to marry me. We're, we're just, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. So in order for me to have his kids, we have to be married. That's just how I feel about it. So that disturbs him. He don't understand why we can't have kids. And that's the reason, because I need to have a man that's going to be a man and take care of me and my kids and be married to me. He comes home late from work, and when he comes in, he's very much into himself. And I asked Johnny, you've been coming home late a lot lately. Why are you coming home late? And he says, oh, I've been out with the fellas. And I say, oh, OK, he gives me a kiss. He kind of strolls me off as if, if you don't need to know what I'm doing. I called Johnny at his mother's house. He wasn't there, and he said that's where he would be. So he lied to me. And like my mother told me, once someone lied to you, they'll always lie to you. And he has put me at my last draw with him. So I need to know what's going on with you. And that's why I came to you guys. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Johnny Burkhalter, age 29, a telemarketer placing his relationship on the back burner. 
Investigation Day 4. Cheaters' operatives maintain a close watch on the suspect's activities for several days. Tailing the suspect a short distance to an apartment complex, Cheaters' crews quickly situate themselves near a residence as suspect Johnny Burkhalter casually makes his way up to the front door. Cheaters' PIs keep their eyes open for signs of movement. Suspect Burkhalter re-emerges just minutes later, but he's not alone. An unidentified woman happily walks hand in hand with the suspect. Cheaters agents follow the pair to a roller skating rink a few miles away. Suspect Burkhalter and company take to the floor in a cautious manner. The two quickly start to have fun, but fall to the hardwood floor after getting carried away with their moves. Suspect Burkhalter helps his lady up and finally opts to leave the establishment. Cheaters PIs track the couple straight back to the woman's residence where the two disappear inside. They are not heard from again for the rest of the night. Investigation Day 7. Cheaters field agents continue their stakeout of the residence that suspect Burkhalter shares with Constance. Early in the afternoon, Cheaters PIs spot suspect Burkhalter exiting the apartment with a young girl who is known to be the daughter of the woman seen with him on the previous day of investigation. Suspect Burkhalter has followed several miles to a familiar complex. He leads the child to the apartment of his female companion, now identified as Marcel Dobson. She immediately greets the two. The threesome piles into Suspect Burkhalter's vehicle and travel to a local fast food eatery. Cheaters detectives cautiously enter the restaurant to check out what may be going on inside. After an enjoyable lunch together, Suspect Burkhalter leads the guests back to his car. They travel a few miles to a different house. Companion Dobson takes the young girl inside and returns minutes later with Suspect Burkhalter. Ready for some time alone, the couple ventures over to the Arts District for drinks at a patio bar. After enjoying a few cocktails together, Suspect Burkhalter and Companion Dobson return to the residence where they dropped off the little girl hours earlier. The threesome heads back to Companion Dobson's residence a short time later, ending the day's investigation. Investigation Day 11. Cheaters operatives surround Companion Dobson's apartment after tracking Suspect Burkhalter to that location. Ready for a night out, Companion Dobson and Suspect Burkhalter turn off the lights and depart. Cheaters PIs tail the couple several miles to the Texas State Fair. The friendly companions walk the midway, partaking in the myriad challenges and games. Suspect Burkhalter apparently feels free to bend the truth to suit his needs, as demonstrated in this phone call with Constance. Hello? Hey, baby, how you doing? I don't know if this one, I'll be back. Cheaters agents withdraw back to headquarters and prepare to alert Constance to the situation. After the break, the confrontation. After garnering extensive evidence of Johnny's infidelity, Cheaters approaches Constance to warn her of the present crisis. Longing to end her turmoil, Constance entrusts her welfare to Cheaters. Connie, thanks for being here tonight. I know that it's not an easy thing for you. You've had some questions about what's been going on in your relationship with Johnny. The reason that we're here tonight is because our detectives do have some of the information that you asked us to gather. Some of this information has the potential to be disturbing. Are you sure that you want to see some of this? Yes, I have to know. As the investigation starts, we had a detective follow Johnny until his arrival at an unknown residence. And he comes out shortly thereafter in the company of a, another young lady. Oh my God. They were followed to a roller skating park that was close by where you can observe their behavior. After spending quite some time there, they return to the residence of this young lady. Johnny does go inside and spends quite some time there. 
on this day, Johnny again collects this woman, oh, where he takes her to the state fair, where you can oh, see these activities that are going on. Yes. And I know it's a shock, and I know you were not expecting this. After an evening at the fair, they again return to the home of this young lady, and Johnny does go in and spend some time there again. So, after seeing what you've seen, do you think you deserve some answers from this man? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going to check with the detective right now. Okay. Going to be okay? <laughs> we're going to get through this. Hey, we're going to get through this. I knew he was a dog, and I'm going to get him. Lay it out for me. What do you got? He took her to a bowling alley. They've been That's there for a little bit. We're on our way. Are you ready to go? Let's go. Come with me. In the five years that you've been together, has he ever done anything as as bold as this? No. I'm really surprised. But I know I need to see Johnny. That's all I want to do is see Johnny. I need my questions answered. I'm just going to check with the detective. Yeah, we are stationed right now at the back of the bowling alley in the parking lot. Okay, yeah, we're, we're rolling now. Okay, is someone by the door? If you can just keep, have somebody keep an eye out at the door. We're pulling up right now. Hang on. They're right inside the doors of this entrance. Look for Johnny. He's in on the right-hand side. Stay with me. Johnny, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. You know who this is. You. You with my name. You. You no good dog. You gonna cheat on me. Who is you? Don't run up in there. Tell me how you think I won't come. I'll come in there and get you. No. It's on. You know better than what you doing. Let me talk to you. Let me yeah. talk, right? Let me Why? Talk. Let me Why? Talk. Why? Let me talk. Why? I ain't mean it. I ain't mean it, baby. You love that? No, baby. You had a kid it. in my house. I love you. You. Please, baby, please. Yo. You no good dog. You better get the talking. You better keep get the talking. Get the talking. What that? I don't know what he's doing for her. He's taking care of me and my child. Cause I'm coming for you. You, I'm coming for you. You no good dog. You, what you running for? You what you running for? What you running for? Why you? No, 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 no. You would. To the fire, y'all take me. You would take me nowhere. Coming up, the conclusion. Get back to your life. So he told you it wasn't working out. Okay. Did he ever invite you over to his house? No, he lives with her. How could he do it? Okay, well, if it wasn't working out, he obviously he me. didn't. Obviously he didn't end it though, did but he? But he was busy. He was with me every day. You better get to talking right now. Talk, baby. What, baby? Calm down, calm down, baby. Get to talking. Down. Talk to me now. If he was so upfront well, with you, her, why is he running her. now? I don't know what the problem is. I do, baby. Babe, I love you, See, baby. They here protecting you. She ain't here helping your bitch. She ain't here doing a thing for you. You've been together for five years. At least respect her enough to answer her questions. You had a kid in my house. No, I did, baby. I seen it. They got everything. Baby, I did. You took her to the front. You took her skating. You won't take me we nowhere went, no we more. Went to the front, baby. We went Long as we've been together. So good, so sweet at first. I want to be with you. Yeah. I love you. Why you? As a why? Baby, it was just, I was drunk. Well, that's always, excuse me. You're intoxicated with some. 
And so you decide you want to cheat. And I bought this hat and you got it here with this. I can't believe you do me like that. Man, don't take it like I thought that. you loved me. I do love you. I love you. I was I in my life with you. Five years, I do love you. Dirt to me, you hear me? Dirt! Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Where did he go? Did you did you see him? He's he ran across the street. Where did she go? He is right there. All right. Slow down and take a burner. Slow down. Okay, hang on. Okay, hang on. She took the car and left. That's what he did. Okay, listen. We can't. We that can't. Is... We can't leave him here. Uh, we're 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 right next to him. We got him we inside. Love him five we're right years here. and this is all you get. We got him here. Okay. All right. Hang on one second. I'm gonna go talk with him. Johnny. Johnny. Okay, listen. Look. Okay. <laughs> Can you have a conversation with her? This is the time for you to open up. <laughs> Don't hold anything back. Come on. And go ahead and get inside. <laughs> I know one thing, it's over. You get your stuff out my place and you go to her and her baby. That's what you do. And it's over. That's all I wanted to know was you being true and you're not. Following the confrontation, Constance admits her reluctance to make any hasty judgments concerning the unnerving ordeal. Coming up shortly, Cheaters uncovers her final decision on the situation. But next, Cheaters welcomes Richard Baker. Richard returns to Cheaters for a discussion about his behavior on the night he was confronted by his wife, Shelby. Identity withheld, age 30. After receiving a wake-up call from Cheaters, he hopes to begin picking up the pieces of his life. Well, when the vans pulled up, I had no idea what was going on. I certainly didn't expect my wife to get out with the film crew and confront me um, while I was out with my secretary. Um, it was horrifying. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I just wish um, she had done it another way. I wish there was a, a different way you know, we could have resolved this than going on the show. That's how I felt initially when it, when it all first, first went down. Oh, you oh, just you? shut who up. You? I've seen it. I've seen it all. You haven't seen, Don't even seen try what? To what have you seen? I've seen it all. You can't just uh, nail me on the wall I'm here in the middle of the night. Coming here and this is crazy. What are you doing? You can't just well, your secretary. I'm not sec my deal secretary, with it. okay? Well, Shelby and I are back together. Um, things are working out. We've gone through, through counseling thanks to the show. We've, uh, we've patched things up and we're having a child, actually. So ultimately, it's helped a lot. I wouldn't say that when the when the van first pulled up, but by the end of it, it it worked out for the best. Shelby, wait, 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 Shelby. I up. Yeah, you did royally. But I don't want to lose you over this. I made a mistake. Let's just talk, all right? Come back with us. I do love Shelby a lot, and I am a very lucky man. And initially, this this scenario with the show completely threw me for a loop. But in the long run, if it wasn't for the show, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, I might have gone on living this lie, and she might have found out, and, and I might not be where I am today with her. And I love Shelby very much. Constance Washington says that although her love for Mr. Burkhalter is overwhelming, she'll need to think things over before allowing him to move back in. Ms. Washington still cries every day and hopes she'll be able to forget about how Johnny chose to be intimate with another woman. 
With her final decision still up in the air, Constance fills her free time with friends and plans on joining a singles group at church. Johnny Burkhalter admits wrongdoing, but appears sorry only that he got caught cheating on Constance. Mr. Burkhalter wants to continue the relationship, but is not holding out much hope that Constance will be able to forget the incident. Despite his skepticism, Mr. Burkhalter still calls her every few days, only to be rejected. When asked about her involvement in the case, Marcel Dobson commented that cheaters should mind their own business and quickly terminated the phone call when asked about her knowledge of Mr. Burke. What I've noticed different besides the fact that he works hours and hours and hours a day, he'll go out of town randomly. Aside from that, I have noticed just the distance between us is completely different, it's completely changed. The communication that we once had is no longer there. The nights that we'll go out and just say, hey, babe, let's just go have fun tonight. That's no longer. Um, his friends, he's gotten a little more secretive as far as who he's hanging around. Everything has changed. It's a complete 180. Suspect's identity withheld. Age 35. A referee accused of foul play with his relationship. Cheaters dispatches agents to the home the suspect shares with Jessica. On this day, the suspect leaves, driving away in his car. Followed by the cheater's team, the suspect arrives at a park. Sometime later, an unknown female pulls up into the spot next to the suspect. The referee greets the woman with a hug and a kiss. Holding the passenger door open like a gentleman, the suspect puts his mysterious lady into his vehicle. He then climbs into the driver's seat and the pair begin to kiss. We do sleep together um, and it's at his discretion. We sleep together um, several nights. I'll go sleep on the couch when I'm feeling a certain way about um, how he comes home smelling. He'll come home smelling fruity. And I know you've been refereeing a game for hours at a time. You're not supposed to be smelling like fruit and strawberries. So I'll go sleep on the couch come back and he'll be, I wake up and he's gone. When I do confront him about smelling funny or smelling weird or fruity, he'll say it's his air freshener inside of his car. Um, he's been smoking or he's been smoking cigarettes and he didn't want to come in my home smelling like cigarettes. So he'll tell me, oh, it was just the air freshener inside of my car. And that's his explanation for smelling like a completely different woman. A while later, the suspect removes his striped referee shirt. The mystery woman gets out of the suspect's car, and leading the way, the femme fatale saunters down the sidewalk toward the trees. Quite some time later, the suspect and his companion finish their jaunt through the park. The deceitful referee escorts his partner to her vehicle, leaning in to give the woman a goodbye kiss. The suspect then gets into his car for the return ride home to a disconsolate Jessica. Deep down inside, I know. I know what's going on. But you never really want to just say, hey, he's cheating on me. I'm finna leave him. I wanted to just avoid this for so long. Just avoid finding out the truth. It's not just a feeling anymore. A year ago, it was just like a feeling. But now I'm like, OK, you think I'm stupid now. So I'm. this is what you're going to do? This is what I'm going to do. Cheaters operatives continue the stakeout of Jessica and the suspect's residence. After some time, the suspect emerges, carrying a bag and garbed in referee gear. The suspect drives to his favorite park, pulling into a spot next to an unknown vehicle. The woman from previous surveillance, now identified only as Tanay, gets out to greet the suspect. Taking off his referee clothing again, the suspect preps himself for a romantic walk through the park. At some point, the pair stop on a bridge to admire the surroundings. They passionately kiss. After some time, the two playful lovers emerge from the trees. Tanae straddles her referee's back. The suspect puts her down near the vehicle. Before leaving, the roguish referee shares a few intimate kisses. And finally pulling away, Tanae turns to her vehicle. The suspect gives her a goodbye tap on her ample bottom. As the man returns to his car, the van pulls away, ending this day of surveillance. Cheaters investigators continue to stake out Jessica and the suspect's residence. 
The suspect emerges from his abode and leaves for the day. He packs his gear into his trunk and drives away. Definitively noting the routine, Cheaters follows the suspect to his regular hangout, the park. Tanae, who's been waiting for him, greets her referee. The young lady then gets into the suspect's car. Today's dalliance goes into another direction. Instead of a walk in the park, the pair drive to a nearby hotel. Holding his paramour's hand, the suspect escorts the woman into the building. A long while later, the suspect and Tanae exit the hotel. The duo walk across the parking lot to a breakfast restaurant. Grabbing a booth, the suspect sits down next to his lover, cuddling and kissing her sweetly. Sometime later, the suspect and Tanae leave the restaurant. They drive back to the park, and as the suspect gives Tanae a final kiss, Cheaters prepares to head back to headquarters to prep a package for a distressed Jessica. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's infidelity proven, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jessica to disclose the findings. Feeling uncomfortable, Jessica attempts to prepare herself for the disheartening news. As you know, Jessica, we have conducted our investigation and we have come up with some pretty interesting findings. Are you prepared to see that? I'm as ready as I'm gonna be. I'm just not ready to get this over with. Okay. Move forward or stay. We begin our investigation outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see emerge, he's in his referee outfit, he gets into his vehicle, and he leaves. As our detectives follow he arrives at a park, and sometime later, this unknown vehicle arrives and this woman steps out. They embrace with a hug. You recognize her at all? I don't, but we about to get to know each other. Okay, well, continuing on, this woman gets into the passenger side of vehicle. He opens the door for her and he shuts it. He then walks in, gets in on the driver's side, and it's really not clear what's going on in the vehicle, but I could see her leaning over into the driver's side. When gets out, he looks a little sweaty. He takes off his referee shirt, puts it in the back, and they walk past the vehicles and into the park. That's when we see moments later after a walk through the park, he opens the door for this unknown female, reaches in for a kiss, closes the door, goes back over to his vehicle, she leaves, and so does he. On this day, we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see emerge, and dressed in some business attire. As our detectives follow him, he arrives at the park where that same woman is waiting for him. He greets her with a very long hug and a kiss. That's when he proceeds to put her in the passenger side of his vehicle, and they drive together and they arrive at a hotel. As you can see, he opens the car door, escorts her out of the vehicle, and they hold hands and walk inside together. They get a room together, and a while later, they come back out of the hotel. After finishing up their antics there, they walk across the street to a Waffle House. They go inside and get very comfortable with each other. While he's inside of this Waffle House, Jessica, he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. So Jessica, at this point in time, with the intel that we have, they're at the same park together. We're going there right now. Are you ready, Jessica, to, to confront? I'm ready. It is what it is. All right. I saw what I needed to see. Why are you running? Come out here and talk to me for a second. Hey, man, come. Come, come. 
Come you was mad second. enough to do so what? You mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you ain't mad enough to talk to me about it. Hey, man. What the f is going on? So we get that shit up. Coming up next, the conclusion. With the intel that we have, they're at the same park together. Bitch, you up. What the are you running for? You mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you ain't mad enough to talk to me about it. So we get that shit up. You Jesus, man. Yo, Don't ask. Say, man. Say, man, get that. Get the off of me. Say, man. Y'all better get this get mother. off of me. I know y'all better get this mother. off me. Get the off of me. Say, man. So you mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you not mad enough to talk about it? Get that shit out of my mother's face. Who's that woman that's there? I know, get it out of my face. But you mad enough to go cheat with a bitch? You better take your little ass off. You huh? mad enough to go cheat? So what the fuck is this? Who Some is side this? piece hoe? Who is that woman? Do you know? And don't sit up here and lie in my mother's face after I done seen everything. Say, look here, man. Bitch, you look at me. Man. Say, you better keep going. Get the hey, man, relax. Get the what are you putting your hands on her for, man? Why would you touch a woman like that? Get that out of my face. I don't even know. So who are you going? She is doing here, man. Not tonight. Did you know about me? Who? No. I'm his girl. Yeah, but I didn't know nothing about you. We been doing this for months. That's what you gotta explain with him. But I've been with this man. You come out here talking all this big badass. Like you've been ultimate ass mother. You ain't even. This in the real mother. It's real. You act like you was probably not like that. That's yeah. why. You're That's right. Look, you coming and landing my bed every night. Right. You landing my bed every night. What you doing? Hey, what you doing? What you doing? Hey, what you doing? Yo, in the bed. You want to be bored with them hoes on TV? So you, you got another bitch. So you got another bitch. You got it. So you got another bitch. Yeah, yeah, bitch. Another bitch. Okay, then go be with that hoe. You gonna let that bitch go live with her? Don't be out here. Keep this mother off me. She's upset. She answers for me, man. What did calm down? Let me talk. All right, calm down. You can't even look at me, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Shut your motherfucking ass. 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 Shut your you up just as quick as you think, bitch. Don't fuck with me, ho. Don't fuck with me. I'm going to tell you. Don't fuck with me. I'm going to tell you. I fucked up. I cheated. I'm on cheaters. I've been busted. You know what I'm saying? But well, don't sit up and act so like just you just all the money. I ain't never said home. I was perfect. Right. But I don't so do this. This is what the right. I don't do. You don't do Been that same man to come to me and tell me I'm leaving. How easy is that? Why she can't act like this when I'm at home? She Why she can't be on me when I'm at the mother's crib? She said Why she can't be all up my mother? She a damn lie. I'm, when I come because to the house, tell you what she do. Your time is all. Meanie Lee, all the motherfuckers on housewives, that's who she wants. Don't touch me. That's who she wants. Don't touch me. She wants to call him. Well, at least they are actually working. Hey, baby, your, working. Man, your man needs their time. Wait till I see yeah. a candy wedding. Delicious. Wait till I see a little scrappy. Man, a little scrappy. No. She don't ever come give me no motherfucking love. Right, so right. I'm saying, so I go out and get some love. Now she wants some motherfucking attention. Man, let's go. Then get the out of my house. I will. Little bitch, we go. How long you be living with this hoe? You gonna be on the street cause you ain't gonna have nowhere to pay no more. I a whole lot of broke yeah. ass you going drive around in the damn 740. You got this bitch driving a minivan and you gonna yeah, compare bitch, this hoe to me? It don't matter, bitch. Look at I you, you, you want the f***ing build hoe. Why you still look fighting? Look at me. Come on, look at me. Why are you look still at me fighting? And look at you. Why are you get still your ass off me, Why are you still fighting? Cause you a bitch. Girl, you a bitch. You can't be You're Get the f*** off me. Get out of my car. You right in my damn view. Where this bitch at? She's right I can't over there. See. Can y'all move the van? Why you all over there talking, bitch? I'm over here. Nah, bitch, don't leave. Weak ass hoe. This hoe. Oh, she's turning around. Where are you going, bitch? Where are you going, hoe? Where are you going, bitch? Where are you going? Where are you going? Get your bitch toe ass off me, hoe. Get the bitch, bitch. Get your ass off me. Get the yeah. Get your ass off me, bitch. Weak ass hoe. Run your mother ass up again. We 
we can. Is she driving? Come on, let's you go. Shirt? You my shirt? Yeah, let's go. Before you leave, man, can I get one word before you leave? What's that? I understand if she doesn't do things that please what? you, but four years. Just remember, four years. I loved her enough to take care of the mother. And then you want to get on camera. You want to get on camera and talk. America gonna be mad at me because I just broke ass. No, because you, you were honest. That's hey, you were honest. And that's what I want to say. Thank hey, you man, for it. Man, y'all get on by the damn car before we spark out on this mother. You talking about broke? My bands is paid for, baby. I'm going to upgrade her like I upgraded your dumb ass. Nah, bitch. You ain't upgraded. No, no, you my car. Move. After the confrontation, Jessica ponders the best course to follow. Stay tuned as Cheaters divulges her choice. But next, Cheater sits down with Kat. Kat comes forward and bears all to tell her side of the story about the afternoon she was caught with another woman's husband. Well, it was just like any other day we were going to work on the sculpture and it was really hot in there. Um, he was rubbing, I think, water on my, bi my back, and we were, we were intimate for a moment. And the next thing I know, chaos breaks loose, and all these strange people come running in. This woman comes in screaming like a lunatic, screaming at me, pushing me. And I didn't know what was going on until afterwards, and I was just mortified. What are you doing? What is this? For God What does it look like? What does it look like for you? I'm his wife, honey. The out. I know all about Rock. No, no. God. Everything I've done for you, Johnny. And he told me the whole time that they had an open marriage and that his wife had like seen the sculpture and she was keeping up with what we were doing. And you know, once I realized it was his wife and that she was unaware of everything that he told me was a lie and I was insulted and I, my feelings were hurt and once the shock wore off, I was just angry. I have no use for him. He does not need to contact me. If anyone needs a reference or anything on him, he's not gonna like what I have to say. Um, I'll vouch that no one needs to work with him again. He's untrustworthy and he's a pig. Was this sculpture right here based on, on your on your body? I was modeling for this guy and he said that his wife and him had some sort of weird relationship and she was down with all this. And I don't know what chose you. I built my life around you. I'm ready to have a child with you. I want to build a future with you. And this is, this is what you give me. You don't tell me this that I'm even worthy of that. You know, so you make it out like I'm not even worthy of that. Oh, this, this is what's so freaking important to you right here. This stupid piece of Oh. You don't know. Johnny, you don't know it. You don't know anything. With everything that transpired, um, I'm almost glad that it did because it did teach me a lot about the industry and how to move forward in it and to do my research and my homework on photographers and artists. And it was my fault as well as anyone else's for being naive and not not paying attention to what was right in front of me. My career is going great, though. Um, I'm still getting gigs and having fun, so I'm not going to let him, you know, stop me from doing what I do and what I love. Directly after the confrontation, Jessica Sanders packed her bags and moved out of the residence she shared with the suspect. Jessica swears that there exists a man somewhere just for her. When approached by Cheater's producers, the suspect acquiesces half-heartedly that he did wrong by Jessica. However, he refuses to explain his actions. The companion, Tanae, would only state to Cheaters that she 